So it's Monday, May 28th, and at 2 o'clock over in City Council Chambers, there was a special meeting. Uh, initially, it was going to be an in-camera meeting, I understand, but they opened it up to the public, and the gallery was full of people from Morocco, and they had questions. And I hate to say, but I missed the first three or four minutes of this, but I did get the rest of it, so you'll be able to listen in on what's going on. And... I really feel for the people in Rockwell. Yeah, it's, it's... Anyways, listen in. Well, I have discussed this, and we're working on it on a really sincere effort. The exact methods we can't disclose. This is why we're having a meeting this afternoon to better explore those options and bring them to fruition, because they have to be done. There's no maybe, if, they have to, and they will be addressed. With that, that is all I have. Any other councillors like to comment on something and then I'll take a few questions? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that as a council, we felt it was important that you know what it is that we are doing to try and help you. Um, we're somewhat limited uh, because of, um, of all of the uh, quote-unquote red tape that even we have to, to go through. But we are trying to mitigate that, to make it short, so that you, as affected residents uh, and others, um, can, can, can have some sort of uh, reassurance that, that we are working very hard to find a place for you to go. And uh, uh, we, won't, we won't be stopping until we have reached that point. And again, to weigh in on Councillor Thompson's statement, that is exactly where I was going with this. We do not want to jeopardize or undermine the EOC. They are a very important organization. Without them, we wouldn't even be where we are right now. They have been working timelessly at self-sacrifice. Believe it, I've been there, I've seen it. And you know, for us to jump the gun on this, it would not be fruitful for anybody in the community because we have to somehow coordinate the funding. But I have been in contact with the with the province. I'm not giving any guarantees because of my communication with the province that it's going to be written in stone. But I'm pushing hard for this city because we have a huge amount of individuals that are displaced right now. And we have to make sure that they get the proper attention that's required. And I had the assurance from the Premier and the Minister that they have our back again. I know it's a common statement, but that was the statement that was heard by not only myself, but by my council too. So we're on there, we're hitting it hard, and we're trying to give you everything ASAP, as fast as is humanly possible <coughs> within the parameters, working with the EOC and with their policies, what they have in place. Okay, the lady in the second row first, and then the gentleman in front, go ahead. I would like to know if, I'm, I'm from North Rockall, uh, if there are any environmental assessments going to happen or probably are on their way already to determine the contamination of our gardens and yeah. yards because um, even if the house is um, um, savable, let's say, um, I, I still don't feel safe with everything else that's going on. In, in my in my garden, it's, it's that's a very good question. You see, that's an aspect that probably would be better addressed by the EOC because they are engaging all of these individuals, unless I'm incorrect. Your, your worship, yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, as far as the, the environmental piece, uh, again, that that's a little bit out of our hands. It's got to come from the province. And my personal suggestion is is that if you have concerns, don't go there. Um, don't. Well, it's not just a matter of just what's happening happening there right now, but for the future. Well, these are all issues that will be addressed because that's where the EOC comes in. Those avenues are, are what we call operational issues that they deal with. The city does not have any direct approach on those elements here in the province. We're looking to get you as much as possible into some housing, and the rest will all be addressed. Rest assured of that. Councilor Tripp. Thank you, Mayor Connor. If I just very quickly, because I don't want to take your time, you need to speak, but there are many things going on at that level we're not involved in, 
the EOC is. There's many assessors and different people on the ground. They've been to your homes. They're looking at the land. I, 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 I know they have not Nobody's been to our homes. We have uh, well, we've been told that they that they are in the process anyway. There are yeah, there's sixty something things. on the list. Yeah, they're, on our yellow tag there, they, it says that they were going to come back. Nobody had come back. We tried to have health yeah. assessments. But, but you must remember, this is access. such a huge project no, right now, and I'm not covering for anybody here or making excuses. This is huge, I, I and I know scared. emotions are running high, no, patients no. are running short, but please. Please, they will be done, and if not, then put it on a put it on a letter or, or, or document the, the houses. Okay, before uh, yeah, because we're burning up time. Yeah. Um, we don't control the IHA, but we can ask them. Yeah, yeah. What like are they coming in? Are they going to do ground sampling? It's all of that you. stuff, so yeah. we can put in that request to IHA. I went to the curling rink yesterday and I asked the IHO about that little comment that was made on the bottom of my slip. And it said possible health hazard. Okay? Pending so, IHA. Yeah. Exactly. Pending IHA. Yeah, they all got the same yeah. thing. That they would come back and they could not access my house at the time. Yes. Well, yeah. I couldn't access it for 12 days. So I went to them yesterday, set up at the curling rink. And I asked them about that, that little comment, and she said, don't worry about it. That was yes. before yeah. the evacuation was lifted. But once the evacuation had been lifted, that little comment does not come into play. And I said, oh, so our air cleaned itself up overnight, even though yeah. Yeah. since you rescinded the evacuation order. I said, I have to go in there with a, a canister mask. I can't use anything cloth because I can't breathe. And I said, so has, are you going to send people out to our homes to find out if there's a health risk with us being in there cleaning up our homes? And she said, oh, no, because your air quality is fine. Yeah, that's, that's this cool. is what I got from them. From Interior Health? Interior yeah. Health at the curling rink Kevin. where we were told to yeah. go and discuss things yeah. with the proper people. Kevin. That was everybody, I think, because yes. I thought it was individual, and we all ended up having to phone in individually to find the same answer that that was un, that was an unfortunate wording. That's our answer after that. That's that was it. But that's only part of it. You say it's emotions. We are sitting here. We are the people behind your dike, your dike that was supposed to protect us, your dike that hit high water last year. Your dike that was supposed to give us a special evacuation and emergency response order, especially for us, not the rest of the city, us. Yeah, we didn't eat. No one, and no one got one alert in our neighbor and in the whole area. We've asked around. I haven't heard of one yet. There could be, but I don't know who it would be. No evacuation, no alert, nothing. People spent the night there. Then next thing, it's it's compounded. It's now we're sitting there in sewage and yes. twelve hours of. Possibly 12 hours, we were heard. 18 hours. 18 hours. Sorry, 18 hours of raw sewage being dumped in there because you Four have days. a habit of sending Four the sewage days. through Ruckles to the sewage treatment, and it went down last year as well. I was assured it was fixed. This wasn't a fix. This was, this was obscene what happened to that neighborhood. And with all that sewage being pumped in there, now it, we're kind of being dismissed as it's too, we're busy. The EOC is busy. And we're still sitting there, and it is so disgustingly slimy and Passing smelly the back there. And professional people don't want to go in there. But we're, everyone here is expected to go in, trusting that the health thing has been looked after. It's, it's, really, it's really disgraceful. Yes. So I think what, what, what would help us is like uh, to fight. Unfortunately, I cannot have someone ask, unless there's other people, because it's hard to give everybody a chance. What? <coughs> That's <coughs> This woman, this gentleman, this gentleman. But I'll let you. I'll let you come back if you time. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, my question is: Are you going to come with your dumpsters yeah. and your truck and, and your loader question. and get rid of the yes. crap on the road? Yes. That we, nice. We've dunged out our house as much mm -hmm. as we can. Mm -hmm. yes. Can we get the rest of it? Yeah. Because some of us don't have access to trucks to trains. No, we realize that, and that is an element too that I've already brought up even at the RDKB table the other evening. 
Yeah. Excuse me, please. If we gotta have order, otherwise I'm gonna dismiss this meeting. Okay. We can't be over talking one another. That's not gonna work for anybody. Everybody loses in this one. So, bottom line is we're looking at all of those elements. I brought that subject matter up when the discussion came up about waiving the tipping fees. My first comment was. What about people that don't have means of bringing refrigerators and everything? How is that going to be addressed? Because that's a major issue. It's nice to say tipping fees are waived, but if you can't bring the debris and the garbage to the landfill, then boom. So there is another element. We're looking at all those avenues and we're trying to get them rectified ASAP. I know in a lot of cases it's not fast enough. I fully understand because of the predicament. But this, again, without sounding condescending, is a massive blow that we got dealt. In respect to the dikes, quickly, we had a 200-year flood level dikes. So that, at that time, that's what the dikes were made for. Nobody expected something like this. We had nothing to gauge it by. So you cannot say that the dikes were inadequate or anything like that. That's not even close in the realms of reality. We worked with criteria which was I believe from 1948 somewhere around that range yeah. so that's all we had to work with but we're working on a diking plan we're getting you know grants and funding from the province we're working on a new map mapping diking everything this is a massive undertaking but we can only do it in a certain amount of steps towards the province and it's so far it's working with the province go ahead um, okay, my, my name is Kevin Lennox. I have a home on the river on uh, First Street, North North Ruckel. Uh, my son and I, have, I, I've left my business. My son has left his job. We're sleeping in the back of our trucks. We've been working tire tirelessly, as you might be able to tell. I'm sorry for ruining your carpets. Um, uh, we're working on our house. We've been ripping things out. I have 2,400 square feet of basement that was fully finished, that was underwater. Um, and then I hear that you're talking about <coughs> expropriating our land, that's what your meeting is about today. I'd like no, to no, 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 excuse me. Excuse me, I'm, 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 I'm working tirelessly to save my home. Okay, yes. so now per, per se, if I'm talking about contaminated land, should a situation like that occur, I've even talked to the province and said, these people cannot walk away with zero. Okay, because if your land is deemed worthless, it can't be worthless. So these are all avenues we're addressing, but it all takes steps. But we're not discussing we're not, anything not, like that. Not, hang on. Hang on. No, no. Worship, that, that conversation is, is something that, that's not part of the meeting that's going to be here. Land disposition is actually relating to other city properties, and it's specific to city properties, not other owners' properties. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're talking about today in this meeting that's coming up. Not at all. This has nothing to do with that subject matter at all. Our main concern yeah. now, and a lot of the concerns, as I have already heard from people, is the contaminated factor. Yeah. Yeah. The contaminated factor. And that's the element that I'm looking at too. Because even though your land is contaminated, you can't walk away with nothing. And that's not the city's role, but that's the province's role, where they have to step in. We, we want to be here for you. Yeah. And work with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lady in the second. Okay, I'm only going to have to be able to take a few more questions. I'm sorry for running the time. Go ahead. We're just wondering if there's any truth about the electrical company putting in the post into the dike on 5th Street where it broke. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> Say that again. The, where the dike broke on 5th Street. We were, we were told that the electrical company had put a new post in there shortly before the flood. And we weakened the dike. And they had a piece of machinery that was on the dike and compromised it. That's what the scuttlebutt is. Yes. Yeah. There is a there is a pole in the dike with yeah, a guide wire, which yeah. shouldn't okay. be in the dike anyway. Even if it wasn't just lately. Well, that's a that's a, an area that I can't comment on because uh, it's in charge right now. Not much yeah. So. Exactly. Because if it's Fortis, it has nothing to do with the city of Grand Forks. No, who's in charge of the dike? We need a permit. 
that. Um, if it's a rumor, I, I don't. It could be true, so it could be a fact, whatever. But if Fortis didn't pull a permit and then destroyed a dike, which they may or may not have, anyways, then that would be um, their responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if it was right? the city that did it, it would be the city's responsibility. Yes. So if the city allowed the permit to be pulled, would not it not the fall? The city no. has nothing to do I, with their permit. I can only so make so one quick comment here if I may intercede on all of this. I, I'm hoping that this conversation here was for updates mm -hmm. of what the city is yeah. trying to do for you and not to try to lay blame. Because okay. laying blame but is very simply done. Gets, yeah. We can all lay blame. I mean, that's very easy mm -hmm. done. But I think the problem here, or the situation here is we got to find a resolve to what just has happened. It's happened. Let's not sit here and blame one or another or anyone okay. in this. Let's move forward to get a resolve mm -hmm. on how we're going to move forward with this so like I've said before, that we can make Grand Forks bigger, stronger, and better. And we are aiming in that direction. It's, it, it's of no relevance to blame Fortis or try to blame the city about permits. We'll find out all of that. That does not solve your problem now. But perhaps that's actually, that could be looked into. They're good questions, though, that we need to find answers to. So, thank you. Actually, I, I don't think people are looking for who to blame exactly, but there are a lot, I, I, I expect there are more than just my wife and I out of North Ruckel. We've been paying insurance for 28 years, okay? And now we're getting an insurance company telling us they can't help us. We got a government telling us they can't help us because we didn't know the legal loophole about overland insurance. So it's not blame. I'm sorry, I'm not looking to blame anybody, but it's, we need a hand down there. Yeah. You know, we need a hand, we, we, we need some help um, from whoever. Like there was a whole army of people out there sandbagging because that's fun, but the cleanup isn't fun. And so I don't see that same army of people down there helping us clean up our streets. Yeah. There's trash and rubbish all over the streets yeah. and nobody knows who's a, who it belongs to because it, it was floating from yard to yard. Yeah. Some of it floated down from out of town, some of it is city, some of it's country, it doesn't matter whose it is anymore. So, yeah, with all due respect, sorry, I'm, I'm just, yeah. just clarifying. But to respond to your first point, this is why I opened this meeting up. Yeah. Okay, to address and to hear, to hear more so, not necessarily to address at this point, but I wanted to hear some of these things to see if we could do something about it. I appreciate that, sir. Thank and that's the honest to God's truth. Okay. So, uh, in our, our case, like we're on the, the corner right, right at second 68. Um, and, sorry. Anyway, so we were out for that same whatever 12 days, and well, even really longer because the red tag said basically don't go in there. But they said, well, if there's something important, you go ahead and grab it or whatever, but, you know, get in, get out sort of thing. Um, and it got changed to a, a yellow a couple of days ago that said basically um, for access for contents only. Is in. So that says to me, like, don't go in and start ripping drywall out and shit like that because it's, it's probably maybe in this case no point or not safe to do so or whatever. Um, but we're still in the back of our mind, a little, a little nervous. That, like, are we not doing enough? Or it, it's pretty gross to get in there. I could never in a million years ask a friend of mine to go is in. Is there a so. question? This or all these yeah. Things? Well, that's the question. Are we doing the right thing here, or, uh, or it, as long as you're respecting what orders have been given out to you by the EOC, please respect them and abide by them. So. I guess if, if people aren't taking the, like say the gentleman's going through a lot of stuff to get his house cleaned out, we're not doing that because it's it basically, it, it looks to me like we shouldn't be doing that according to the, the stickers and so on. Uh, do, I have, do we have that right? It's for your own safety. Yeah, so nobody at the end of the day is going to say, well, geez, how come you didn't dry that shit out or you should, your, your house rotted because you didn't go in there and do that? No, that will never be done because... These people are professional. They'll tell you when to go in, when you don't. Yeah. A lot of the evacuation orders have been rescinded, 
So a lot of them are on alert, and I think there's only a few now. I believe there's nine properties or something. So it's pretty much, we're getting there. We're getting there. Because the, the real, and I'll say something here. Another reason was we expected a second wave. Yep. That kind of took yeah. everything and everybody by surprise. And we weren't ready, so to speak, to start moving on these concepts of, of uh, the re response, the restoration, and all of that. That had a major impact. And when that didn't happen, I knew exactly that we were going to be facing this. I did because I was working in the background trying to find out different options. And I would thought we would. Kevin wanted to say something about tags. Just wondering, uh, yeah, with regards to the three tags, um, if you don't mind. No, no, please. Uh, go ahead. So, been a lot of conflicting uh, stories about the three colored tags and really they were done by a rapid damage assessment team and those people were looking for obvious signs of life safety so if you had a red tag they in their quick scan of your of your property they spotted things that they thought were a life safety issue and that's where the green means they found nothing yellow typically things like your electric or your gas appliances maybe were underwater and needed to be checked before you fire them up again because if you don't that's a life safety issue red tags were things like they saw either structure leaning or perhaps had shifted uh, foundation in cracks in the foundation maybe they were there beforehand but that's the quick things they were looking for not structural engineers not building inspectors but people trained to look for a short checklist of things and that's why your property uh, had a red and they downgraded it to a yellow they went back took another look at it so, so the yellow one actually was from the city building inspector so so yeah so he's he's one of the ones that was trained to do that and to do yeah. the the downgrade from red into yellow um, the only properties that we are telling people totally stay away from um, where we you know, don't want you to take any risk unto yourself we're saying you must stay away from are the nine properties that remain under evacuation order and none of them are in the, the Rockwell area. Thank you. Has everybody applied for DMA for the disaster fund? Yes. Okay. And you know there is a 1-800 number you can call and check on the status of your application? Oh, yes. okay. there is a, you can check on the status of your application if you're wondering what happened to it. Because they, they're going to eventually call us and, and come and look at the damage themselves per property almost? Is that, is that that's what they do? There's a we, we just had DFA in today. Yeah. We applied for it <coughs> Excuse me. Um, shortly after the evacuation. We went down to Community Futures, put in our two pages immediately. Um, we then went down to the insurance company to discuss things with them and while I was there DFA did call me and he says I'm returning your phone call from four days ago. He said we're a little busy. I said I understand that. And he said uh, this is the procedure that we follow. Within about a half an hour he phoned me back he said yes I've got your application. I pulled it up on the computer. We had to send some other information to him. He says if it lands on my desk today, Thursday, this last Thursday or Friday as soon as we process it, we'll be getting a hold of you. We got the call yesterday from the guy, told me he had a meeting with us today at 10 o'clock. So he was there for just about three hours. Uh, so the stuff they're looking at, like, so we have a take They come in and they measure everything. Everything. Uh, everything. They're looking at all due respect to everyone. I am going to plug on this one. Yeah. If, like I said, I gave out my cell number. The line is open. Anybody has any questions? The only question I have is the air quality inside our homes. Okay. For me, I have onset COPD. Okay. I go in for 15 minutes. I come out for a half an hour. Okay. That is what I know. I, I, I know this. Personally respond. That's all. That, these are questions that we, as as residents, we go up to talk to the IHO, the EOC, and whatever. And and it's it's a circle okay and by the time we walk out we're baffled because we didn't get any answers and this is all we're this all we're all after is answers from the professionals and, and answers from our, our city council trying to re relay that information you have to get on behalf of the citizens but I, I cannot take any more questions I'm sorry I'm in my house period so you so, have to all, you have to. Everything's got all, we're all we're asking for is information. 
Yeah. Let us in on, on what's like, going on, yeah. we are. and we're not let in the dark all the time. And for 12 days, I wasn't even close to my house. I'd go down to 2nd Street Bridge, and I couldn't even see it because it's blocked by a house. That's why you're and, here today. And, it, yeah. and it's frustrating because I all our belongings there. I have had to take work time off of work to look after my wife <laughs> because every day she cries because of the devastation. That's why you're here today. I'm sorry it could be any longer. My apologies again for the misunderstanding. But just keep us informed. Just we will somehow and, and just if let you us have know. any questions, if you have access to a computer or even to the library and use a computer, send it to my desk. I will forward it to the best ability to find out what we can do. If we can, we will do something for you. Councilor Tripp, yeah. that's it. May I ask a question? Are you all from Ruckel? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. So do I be here? So do you have uh, like a ground zero point in Ruckel where everybody is going at no. some point to get no. information? No. No. Maybe if we establish something like that. Then you could go and, and get see updates on a board. Uh, there was supposed to be at the at the curling okay, range. Yeah, but I'm saying for you, for yeah. you, things that are coming into your neighborhood, would would something like that be helpful? Yes. Yeah. Okay, maybe we can arrange something like that. Okay. Put up some sort of a board. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Thank That's you. it. I'm counting. Uh, my name is Melissa. I'm with Whispers of Hope. I'm actually concerned about support services coming up. Red Cross has been doing an amazing job yeah. and they're going to be leaving soon. Um, I know in the last couple months Whispers has been closed, but since then we've bought a commercial kitchen trailer and we've been struggling to find a location for it. Would Council please work with us to either provide or help us locate a location where we can provide people meals so they're no longer eating fast food as you mentioned? Perhaps down in Rockwell. They would need it down in there for the rest of the Nobody's going to eat any food from there. Yeah. Yeah. Red, Red Cross says they're not leaving anytime soon. All right. That's what they told it needs to be yeah. safe, and, and then zoning is a limitation. Okay, well, that would be an aspect that you might want to bring to the either to the city or to the EOC as a recommendation. So there's an avenue you could probably try. I, I have with RDKB, and so I was just wanting to know if, if the city would, would be willing to work with us on that as well. Depending what your intentions are. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to call it now. Sorry. Thank you very Thank you. much for your time. Thank you for coming. Again, my sincere apologies for the misconception and the misinterpretation of what I planned to do today. What's your question?